is Shivam Roy from Hacksyux. Today we are going to talk about the different commands or the basic commands of Windows and Linux systems. So what I'm using right here is Pentest Box and you can get Pentest Box for Windows from Google. Like Pentest Box and this will directly get you to the download areas and you can download this software from here so I would recommend Pentest Box with Metasploit and please make sure that you have added your exclusion to C Pentest Box and do not change the root directory please let it be C Pentest Box or else uh, a lot of dependency issues might occur so once you have Pentest Box or you are into a Linux shell and I'll emulate a Linux shell with the help of this. Uh, you know, this is a Ubuntu distribution, and I have a shell here. So the first command we are going to try is to display the IP configuration. Okay, IP addresses are addresses given to a computer to be identified in a network. IF config is the uh, command for the IP address of this Linux system. And it says that 192.168.17.139 is the IP address of this particular workstation. Now, notice that we also have another IP address called 192.168.17.138. Now, both of these are in the same network because they have the same stuff. Network address, right? And the host address, that is the last one, is different for both the, the two different interfaces. I have said this so. so that it emulates two different computers in the same system right so this for the network 192.168.17.138 and 139 are two different computers and that is being realized with the help of two different interfaces eth1 and eth0 now another thing you need to understand is that these two ip addresses is that of this virtual linux system that i have hosted now for instance I want to know the IP address of my host windows I am going to type IP config that is the different that is different from this command and so IP config tells me that 192.168.17.1 is just one IP address of this network this network which I had made inside my computer so that I could host virtual OSS in that and connect directly to it so now what I can also do here is I can use the SSH service to go into this computer 192.168.17.138 right and now I have a Windows and a Linux shell right here so I can explain to you the commands with much more ease so so this is how you display the configuration of the ip now one thing to keep in mind is this these different ips are all of the same system now how is that possible that is possible because all these are private ips which are given either by my router or my virtual router in this case which is my computer itself i set up a network inside my computer but generally you will get virtual addresses which are given by your router and this IP address is given by my router my Wi-Fi router so this IP address is something which is a dynamic IP and this is done with the help of something called subnetting so we implement a network and a subnet mask to find out all the number of IP in a host which will be act active inside the network the default getaway the default getaway take the default getaway to be the only road that leaves a particular town so if anything anything that needs to leave the network it needs to pass through the default getaway what i mean by that is say for instance i have a uh, router and with the router i have two other machines in my computer in my network so the two machines will be connected and they will to make connection between two machines a and b inside the network you would not need a default gateway but whenever my machine a 
or the other machine B would want to connect to any computer that's not in the network, that's somewhere in the internet, it would need to pass through the default gateway. And in this case, the default gateway is the router. To further understand this concepts, networking basics would help you understand what the basic of this networking is. So this talks about an external IP address and the internet. Now, as you can see, we have a number of IP addresses. Here. But if we let this go and if we search what is my IP, now this is supposed to give me my public IP address, which is supposed to and which will stay um, stagnant throughout the internet. No, and this IP address is not going to change and it's going to be static. So anything I do, even when this virtual machine is going to be going to this, but um, going to the internet as this IP address, because this is the one given by the internet. So that is the external IP address and the internet, your internal IP address and your router is the one which your router gives you and the ports and 127.0.0.1 now 127.0.0.1 is an ip which has been exclusively kept reserved for your local system now for me 127.0.0.1 is gonna be my system for you it's gonna be yours now ports ports if you look into the tcp ip model you would see that the networking can be divided into application, transport, internet, network access layer, and finally the last one, the data link layer. But here, the application the, in the application layer, there will be something known as ports, and these ports are not what you the hardware ports on the computer, right? These are software ports, and these software ports use these services, these protocol services, TCP. A UDP transmission control protocol or user data, data ground protocol to send information uh, through the internet. Now, each service, each service, Telnet, FTP, SMTP, DNS has a specific port. Like for Telnet, it's 23, for FTP, it's 21, for SMTP, it's 25, and for DNS, it's 53. For HTTP, it's 80, for HTTPS, it's 443. Like this, there are uh, an, an entire uh, standard of ports that's been used the top thousand most common ports and then you can use port from one to six five five three six right so i would suggest you to read through this and i read a little bit about networking to understand these concepts further but for the sake of this tutorial right now i have to told you a little bit a little basic of what networking means here so once you are in the network you are given an ip address and the thing that your computer knows is a routing table right so if you do route here in windows in linux this command route is going to show you the routing table these this is the two interfaces and the routing table of these interfaces now in windows to do the same uh, to get the same output i would type route print and now i can see all the routing details of this particular host my windows host there is also another command called netstat. Now netstat is going to tell you all the connections that you have with your from that your system has from which port to which port through as its foreign address, right? The states as listening and the connections which are established. Now to do the same in Linux, you are also going to type netstat minus a n t. Now, mind you that this minus A and TP might look a little uh, difficult at first, but this are just switches you pass to find the output, to get an output in the way you want to get an output. Like for instance, minus A and TP told me that even P tells me about the PID of the program that I want to see. Now, for instance, I don't want to see a PID. I can simply give the same command my minus A and T and I can see the output without any process. ID given here so that is just a way of displaying output the next important command is about the services so if in Windows I do this task list SVC I could see all the services in the Windows system now for instance I want to send the output of one command to another for instance I want to find the process ID of Chrome exe or cmd exe then i could 
do this. So I could now I can only trim the output to see only the output which has CMD exe on it and the process IDs. So this pipe actually pipes the output of this command into this command. Now this is the same thing that happens in Linux. Like for instance, PS aux would tell me about all the different processes that's running in the Linux system. Now for instance, I want to see all the process that's running as root. I can simply do a grep root. And now I see all the processes that's been running as root inside that Uberintu distribution. So all this lets you do a lot of handy work at the shell and get acquainted to it. So apart from these basic commands, there are other there are also other commands which you should know. Like R minus A, address resolution protocol. It tells you about the different addresses, the MAC addresses of these systems which your computer knows about in the particular network. Now this virtual OS that is uh, Linux it knows about my computer it knows about my computer through different to two, uh, two different interfaces that is why you see the same mac id of the same of two uh, of different hosts at the different interfaces this is eth0 interface this is eth1 interface and though both of them have the same id and uh, they have the same mac id right same uh, internet uh, ip address and the mac id so this tells you that this computer this particular linux distribution has two different connections with the same network while if i want to do the same if i want to do the same here in windows i'm just gonna type uh, and it's gonna tell me the same information which is important for my which which is uh, legit for my host os like for instance 192.168.1 this is my router and that is why it has a physical address. It has a MAC address, which is of type dynamic. So these are important commands, which are both useful for Linux and Windows. Now, for instance, killing a process in Linux would be kill minus nine and the process ID. But in Windows, it's gonna be task kill PID and the PID of the process you want to kill. Now. Apart from this, to see all the services that's installed in Windows, you would do sc query. And you see all the services and all the programs that's been installed in Windows. While in Linux, to do the same thing, you would use something called, because this is Debian Linux and apt is advanced packaging tool. So the apt command will tell you a list of all the packages that's there in the app servers. And you can use app search or app show to show the packages you want to show or you want to see in specific. These are all the packages that are there in the server and you can choose you can directly download them and add them to your path. Now, for instance, there is one key difference between Linux and Windows. The key difference would be that in Linux, a lot of different OSs, a lot of different program, uh, program compilers are loaded by default. Like for instance, Python. On Kali or on Ubuntu will directly give you a Python shell, but the same would not uh, happen on Windows, right? By default. So to do that, what well, first you need to do is you need to download Python for Windows or any language for that matter. So once you have downloaded your selected language, once you have downloaded the selected language and installed it, second thing you need to do is you need to add. You need to add that. Exe the exe of the of exe of Python or any compiler you are going to use to your path. Now to add that to your path, like for instance, you have installed, you have downloaded and installed Python and it's in C Python, right? So what you have to do is you have to add, you have to add this to your path. Now how do you add this to your path? To add this to your path in Windows, what you're going to have to do is you're going to go to properties of your PC and there will be advanced system settings so environment variables would give you system variables and there you will have path so you edit the path and you add a new path and then you add the path of the program 
where you have installed like C Python to seven. Once that's done, you can use it pretty much like Linux. Like you can use it like this. You can just type Python in C and not in C Python 27 and you'll still have the Python interpreter ready for you. So these are the most key uh, differences between Linux and Windows. And once you understand these differences, once you understand that bit of networking, I recommend you to read through a lot of network working basics because that's gonna tell you a lot about how to uh, understand different computers in the network. So once you are aware of this networking basics, please go through this link. And once you're aware of the uh, basic networking basics and you can understand the near basics of network and a little bit of programming and some shell uh, shell handiwork would actually give you a decent hand over hacking. I hope you